large roundabout us. We exalt you. We praise you. We lift you up on high today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise unto him. Clap your hands. Shout unto him with a voice of triumph. Let's worship the Lord in song today. Amen. How many know we serve a good God? I said, how many know we serve a good God? The glory of the Lord shines down on us when our praises go up. So this morning, we're going to praise Him and know that His glory is going to show up in this place. That your impossible can be made possible this morning because we're going to send the praises up and God is going to come down and meet us right here. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us. Let the songs of the Lord rise among us let the joy of our king rise among us let it rise oh let it rise Whoa, let it rise sing oh somebody shout And let the praises of our King rise Oh, let it rise, let it rise. Let the joy of the Lord, let it rise among us. Let the joy of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King, let them rise among us. Let it rise, oh, let it rise. here with something impossible this morning I don't know about you but I got a sick baby at home we've all got something that we're dealing with that we can't overcome on our own and when we praise the Lord when we offer up our praises to him he can come down and fix what's broken we can't do it we got to have him do it for us and our praises is what makes him notice what we're doing so we're going to sing it again and if you got something impossible we want you to know this is where you bring your impossible so sing with us 
Let the joy of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the joy of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King let them rise among us. Let it rise. Oh, let it rise. Let the joy of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the joy of the Lord. His joy is our strength. Let it rise among us. Let it rise. Let it rise. Sing oh, oh let it rise. Sing oh. Help me out now. It's a name above all names. You're worthy of all praise. Mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. It's a name above all names. You're worthy of all praise. How mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hand. Say name above all names. You're worthy of all praise. How mighty are the works of your hand. Mighty are the works of your hands. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. 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 of your hands sing name above all names you're worthy of all praise how mighty are the works of your hands mighty are the works of your hands sing name above all names your word of all praise. Mighty are the works of your hands. Mighty are the works of your hands. Oh, thank you, Lord. We love you, Lord. You're worthy of all of our praise, Lord Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands to him. He is worthy. He is the name above every name. He is ruler of all. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. He is able. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just want to be close to him. I just want to dwell in a place where he is so near. Hallelujah, Holy Spirit. You are welcome in this vessel. Can we just lift our hands to him? Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. There's nothing worth more 
that could ever come close no thing can compare you're our living hope your presence Lord sing that out to him today I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love where our hearts become free and our shame is undone in his presence your presence lord help me sing it out holy spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your Oh 
Close your eyes, lift your hands, sing it with them. Let the glory of the Lord fill the house today. your hands and give him that praise this morning hallelujah fill this house God with your glory fill it with your anointing today we've come to worship you hallelujah lift him up with your voice and lift him up with your hands today bless him and magnify him for he is worthy of our praise hallelujah fill the house with your glory God let your anointing break every yoke in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Just 
just want to welcome you in, God. Come flood this place and fill the end. Yes! Your glory, God, is what our hearts long It's what we long for, Jesus. Just to be overwhelmed. By your presence, Lord. Come on. Hallelujah, the Lord is here today. Why don't you just reach your hand over, touch somebody next to you this morning, begin to pray for them. God, touch my brother, touch my sister today. Let the glory of the Lord be upon them. Whatever their need is today, God, we pray that you would break the chains of bondage, that you would set the captive free, that you would bring deliverance this morning, that you would bring healing today, God. Bless my brother and my sister today. Let the glory of the Lord be upon them. Let your will be done in them. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Now lift your hand and give him some praise. Give God some praise this morning. Thank him for his blessing. Thank him for his anointing. Thank him for his deliverance. Thank him for his healing today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Somebody make a joyful noise unto the Lord this morning. It is good to give thanks unto the Lord. It is good to praise his name. Hallelujah. He said, let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Will you lift your voice one more time and give him that praise? We praise you today, God. We bless you today, Lord. We exalt you this morning. You are the great I am. You are the healer and the way maker. I bless you. I bless you. I bless you today. Amen. Clap your hands one more time to the Lord. Amen. And you may be seated in Jesus' name. Praise God. I feel the glory of the Lord in the house today. God wants to do something special in our lives if we'll just let him. Amen. Praise God. I want to honor a few people this morning. Amen. The Bible tells us to give honor to whom honor is due. I would first like to say thank you to all of you that helped us with Friend Day last week. We had a fabulous service, a great turnout. Thank you for inviting people. Hallelujah. The church was packed. Amen. I think it can be that way every Sunday. Amen. Praise God. So thank you for all your efforts. Amen. I'd like to ask Brother Archer to come up here this morning. Brother Archer, would you come forward this morning? We're excited, amen. Brother Archer recently was baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. To God be the glory. I'm just thankful for God bringing me to Cross Creek. I'm home. Amen. Just keep, I'm home. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. Give him a round of applause. It's always good to welcome another name written down in glory. Amen. Amen. Sister Sai. Amen. If she'll come up, she was received the Holy Ghost and was baptized. That's Sister Cecile's mom right there. Amen. There you go. Amen. 
Praise God. Congratulations, Mom. Amen. Praise God. Always happy to celebrate when people are baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Jessica, where are you, Jessica Johnson? Amen. Come on up, Jessica. Amen. She was baptized. Hallelujah. We're excited about our Sunday school kids being baptized. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Junior, come on up here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Congratulations, man. There you go. Amen. He was baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Spence, where are you? Amen. All right. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Sister Kashmir. Rosemont Kashmir. Amen. Sister Israel. Sister. Praise the Lord. Let's give God some praise this morning. The Lord is doing a great work in our church. We thank you for these that have been baptized. We thank you for these that have been filled with the Holy Ghost. We give you glory and honor and praise today, Lord. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. You may be seated. Amen. We are also excited today to have Brother Lynn with us from Dallas, Texas. Amen. He will be ministering in our Miso Church this afternoon. Brother Lynn, come and share your testimony with us this morning. Brother. Hallelujah. 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 I'm so glad to be here. I do have a lot of things to say, but I'm not going to take much time. In case if I did, Please forgive me. God is so good. Now, it, it's very good to see the people, the church on Cross Creek Apostolic Church. Very diversity. Our church is kind of the same. As soon as I get into the church, one thing I felt was I don't feel like a stranger. You know what? These are my brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was, I was so happy. These are my brother and sister. I don't feel like a stranger man at all. This is my home. This is my church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what I felt. I felt. I'm just to see you encourage me. Just to see the way you worship. The way you love. I see the pastor. Especially the pastor and son. See father and son in the pulpit. You know what? God is so good. God is so good. I'm glad to see that. I wish I will do that the same. My son's 10 years old. You know what? That's, the Bible said that's the inheritance that we got from God. Hallelujah. 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 I'm from Dallas, Texas. Originally from Myanmar, known as uh, Burma. So as a matter of fact, I think you went to the CLC, right? My wife did finish at CLC in 1994. That's where we're from. And we are ministering at Dallas, the Burmese people, around 70 members. And this is small congregation. We have five different languages within 70. Very complex country. There's a lot of language that divide us. But five different languages. You know what? We all united together. Because there's only one reason. Because our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 We all have one purpose because our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why I don't feel stranger. My God, my Father is the same as you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same in here. He's the same in Dallas. He's the same in back in Myanmar. He's the same. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible said, if you receive him. I'm so glad people are receiving the Holy Spirit. You know what? I'm so glad that. That's what you call living church. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that people are baptized in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That's what you call living church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not dead church. That's what I felt. I'm so happy to be here. Hallelujah. If you receive him, you will be called the sons of God. Right? It's not a born of the blood. It's not the will of the flesh. Why? You are born of God. Hallelujah. 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 God, God loved me so much. You know what? I have so many things in my life. I fell so many times. I fell so many times. But He still loved me. He used me. Hallelujah. He's good to me all the time. He always prepared a place for me. He gave me brother and sister. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm so glad. You know what? You are so blessed. You are so blessed. We worship a living God. We worship a living God. Where we came from, 87% of the population, they worship the idol made by men. Made by men. You heard about it. You haven't really seen it yet. We grow up among them. We are very minority in the class. There will be about 100 people. You will be the only guy that doesn't bow down in front of the idol. They look at you different way. Guy, brother and sister, you are so blessed. You got to know living God here. People, men, mine could be so blinded. They couldn't see. They couldn't see what they couldn't. They don't know what they do. But you do know what you're doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God loves you so much. And then Brother Cap has talked about you so much that he loved to be a member of the church. He's so proud. He's been telling me that, you know what? I, mean, I got the great church. The people are great. The pastor is great. Hallelujah. 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 What your blessing, what I see, the blessing is not only you don't keep that. You let it flow. You let it flow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's what you call the blessing. That's what you call blessings. God bless Abraham to bless others. He become a blessing for others. You become a blessing for the Burmese people. I praise God. I praise God. God loves us so much too. He has prepared you and I so that we can have a nice shadow with a roof on it. God loves us too. God loves everybody. Amen. Hallelujah. So one day, I may not see you again, but one day, each every one of you, I'm going to see you in heaven forever, forever. What did the Bible say? If you, if you help your brother, if you feed your brother, right? And then you are feeding Jesus. What you are doing right now, brother and sister, what you gave, all the offering, all your praising, the way you behave, all of it. You may think that you are just here. You know how people are preaching around the world. Winning soul. People are copying you the way you worship, looking at that. Cross Creek Apostolic Church. They are blessed. 
They are blessed. You're doing the ministry of God. God, let's continue doing a good job. Let's keep praising God. Let's enjoy in Him. All right. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Amen. Why don't we stand to our feet and just give God some praise this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your touch. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise today, God. Hallelujah. Anybody excited about the Lord today? Praise God. Praise God. You can remain standing. Sister Janelle's coming with the announcements, and then we're going to receive our offering this morning. I think you give better when you're able to get it out of your purse and your pocket. Praise God. So you can keep standing. Sister Janelle, would you please come? Amen. Amen. It's a joy to be in the house of the Lord today. Praise God. Turn to your neighbor say you look wonderful today. <laughs> and a special welcome to all of our guests online. We are so happy to have you with us. You all look beautiful. Three brief announcements for you this morning. There will be no service on November 22nd because of Thanksgiving. Spend the evening sharing quality time with your families. A gentle reminder, our Christmas banquet is fast approaching. It's in two weeks. It takes place on December 9th at the Doubletree Hotel. Tickets are $35 per person. Please see Sister Bleedy, I think she's over here, after service to buy your tickets. Pastor needs a head count by next week, so please get your money to her as soon as possible. And last, on December 23rd, we will be having a special Christmas service. Sister Angela's father will be sharing the word of God with us, so please look forward to that. Thank you. And everybody say amen. amen. Ushers, if you'll come, let us pray over the offering. Father, we give you thanks and praise for all your goodness and mercy. Thank you for every good and perfect gift that cometh down from you, Lord. Bless your people. Rebuke the devourer. Pour out your spirit upon each and every one of us, we pray. Meet every need today, not by our might or our power, God, but by your spirit. In the name of Jesus. And everybody shout amen. amen. As they sing a song, would you march and come and give to the Lord this morning? Water you turned into wine. You open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Oh, into the darkness we shine. And out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you. Unlike you, oh, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God, you are high. Awesome in power, our God, our God, oh, our God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord, you are high. Stop us. 
God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God. up and give him praise if he's great he is greatly to be praised hallelujah come on lift him up bless him today our God is greater our God is stronger our God is powerful there's nothing he can't do praise the name of Jesus hallelujah hallelujah clap your hands and make a joyful noise under the Lord this morning, praise God. Come on, everybody's watching me. I want you to clap your hands and make a joyful noise under the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome the Eastmans back to church with their brand new baby this morning. Amen, baby boy. Hallelujah. What's his name? Julian, glad to have Julian in church for the very first Sunday. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Good to see Tracy and her little one, Lily, with her this morning. God bless her. Amen. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Probably about I don't know, I'm guessing about five or six months ago, we made pledges unto the Lord. Amen. And part of those pledges had nothing to do with finances. Amen. And I have those pledges here this morning. And we're going to offer them up as a burnt offering to the Lord today. It's your, it's your pledge. Whatever you pledged on that piece of paper to the Lord also helped us, amen, to pay off one of the notes on the church. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. So I'm going to first burn your sacrifice before the Lord today. And then we're going to burn the note that we just paid off. And I hope I don't set off the fire alarm. Praise God. Hallelujah.
Let's give God praise this morning. Thank you, Lord, for enabling us to do what seemed to be impossible. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I worship you. I praise you. I love you. I exalt you today, God. Hallelujah. It's because of your giving. It's because of your sacrifice that we are able to do this miraculous thing. Hallelujah. So one, one down, two more to go. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be asking you soon to make a new commitment. Praise God that we can burn that second note. The second note is worth about 150000 Amen. But I believe, hallelujah, it may take us a year or two or three. I don't know what it will take us. But by the grace of God, we're going to burn that one too. Give the Lord a clap offering of praise. Thank you, Jesus. You have been good to us, God. Hallelujah. He has been good. You know, I don't know if you guys have called it, but God's been at work in this place. Amen. Praise God. Just. You know, many of you have testified how you got new jobs or you, you purchased new homes or perhaps got a new car. Or, and God's blessings has just been poured out upon the church. Amen. Some have gotten promotions on their jobs and raises. Amen. Hallelujah. And sat, just a couple weeks ago, Marie Goyne stood up here and testified how that she had a tumor on her brain. Amen. And before they went to surgery, they did another CT scan. And when they did the sec that CT scan, they couldn't find the tumor anywhere. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that's the glory of God. That's the power of God. We give him praise today. We give God praise today. Amen. Paying off this mortgage is a, I give him glory because that's an impossible thing. Hallelujah. Without your help and commitment to God be the glory. So I think we should just lift our voices and lift our hands and give God some thanks today for all of his wonderful blessings. We love you this morning. We praise you this morning. We bless your name today, God. You have been good to us. You have been good to us, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Isn't God good? I'll say it again. Isn't God good? Praise God. Amen. Have your Bibles. Turn with me to John chapter 6, and I want to begin at verse 35 this morning. Good to see my friend Giselle back there. My, my brand new Bible study, we appreciate you, Giselle. Glad you're here in the house of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Maybe you'll get with Brother Lynn up here. You got something you can identify with. Amen. His, his family is Hindu. But he wants to be a Christian. 
Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. And God is helping us to teach him a home Bible study. Amen. And hallelujah. He's going he's gonna to be a Christian in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. John chapter 6, verse 35. If you have it, say amen. The scripture said, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He that believeth on me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen. Hallelujah. The bread of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Praise God. Let us pray this morning. Father, thank you for your word. It truly is a lamp into my feet, a light into my pathway. Anoint these lips of clay today. Let your will be fulfilled. Let your will be accomplished. I just give you praise today in Jesus' name. And let everybody say amen. Amen. You may be seated. And as you are, why don't you clap your hands one more time to the Lord. There's an old hymn that goes like this. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people, come and dine. And the chorus goes, come and dine, the master calleth, come and dine. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. Hallelujah. He who fed the multitude and turned the water into wine. Hallelujah. Come and dine. The master calleth. Come and dine. Hallelujah. The second stanza says, With his manna he doth feed and supplies our every need. Oh, tis sweet to sup. Amen. With Jesus all the time. Hallelujah. Come and dine. The master calleth. Come and dine. Jesus has a table spread. Where the saints of God are fed. And he invites his chosen people. To come and dine. He, Jesus said in this verse that we read. That he is the bread of life. And that we that hunger and we that thirst, if we'll come and dine at his table, shall never hunger again, and we shall never thirst again. Now we're not talking about the natural provisions of this world, but we are talking spiritually today. That there is something that God has created in each of our lives, amen, that is a void until we come to know God. I ought to get some amens. I ought to get some praise the Lord's. Hallelujah. I was empty until I found him or he found me. My soul was looking for something that was real. But when, I, when Jesus called me and brought me out of darkness, I knew I had found what I had been looking for. Hallelujah. There's a satisfaction that comes in living for God. There's a fulfilling within our spiritual souls that only comes when I surrender to Jesus and I say, here am I, God. I don't know what I have to offer, but I give you all my heart. I give you all my mind. I give you all my soul. I want to eat some more bread. I want to pull my chair up to the master's table. Hallelujah. And so my title today is that Jesus is the bread of life. Amen. And we as Christians today, we need to guard our hunger. Amen. We need to guard our hunger today. They got last week's sermon up here. Praise God. Hallelujah. But I need to pull my chair up. 
to the master's table. And I need to say, God, I am coming to your house. I am coming to your table because I'm hungry for the power of God in my life. I'm hungry for the reality of your spirit in my soul. I have tried everything and everything has failed, but I'm going to try you now, God. I'm going to seek you with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul, with all my strength because there's only, that's only you that can satisfy my soul. Hallelujah. If I hunger for him, if I thirst for him, praise God. I'll never hunger and thirst for anything again because Jesus satisfies. Can somebody lift their hands and say, Jesus satisfies? Amen. How many of you found that to be true? That God satisfies your soul. Hallelujah. Amen. In Matthew chapter 5 and verse 6, the Bible says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Amen. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. If you're hungry and you come to the master's table, I'm here to tell you, amen, that God is going to feed you. And you're going to go away, amen, satisfied that his bread was fulfilling and his power in your life is fulfilling. And you're going to wake up in the morning and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad. I'm going to tell somebody how great my God is. Why? Because he picked me up out of darkness. He put my feet on a solid rock. He turned my life around. He breathed the breath of life into my soul. And I'm grateful today that I've come and I pulled up a chair at the master's table and I picked up my knife and I picked up my fork and I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat the bread of life. I'm going to put the word of God down on the inside of my soul. Hallelujah. Because when the devil comes in like a flood, the Bible says that God will lift up a standard against him. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that when Jesus was tempted of the devil in the wilderness, he said, get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but God's word shall never pass away. I'm trying to tell somebody that the bread of life works. The power of God works. The anointing of God works. Hallelujah. And Jesus is real today. If you'll just pull up a chair, pull up, get your plate ready, get your plate full of the bread of life and begin to eat, begin to eat at the master's table. Clap your hands. Make a joyful noise unto him. Slide number two, Alyssa. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Blessed are they which hunger and thirst after righteousness. So my question then is how hungry are you for more of God? How hungry are you for an outpouring of God's spirit? How hungry are you that you want God to do something in your life? Hallelujah. Because he said, if we'll pull up the table, if we'll sit at the master's table, he said, I'm going to feed you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to pour out my blessing upon you. And you will not go away disappointed. Somebody needs to do what Psalm said in Psalms 34 and 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. I'm going to pull my chair up and I'm going to taste and see that God is good. I'm going to taste and see that his mercy endureth forever. I'm going to taste and see though all hell come against me, there be more that be for me than be against me. Somebody clap their hands. Somebody praise him this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. At the master's table, come and dine. Hallelujah. Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God can be fed. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know about you, but there's nothing more discouraging 
than preparing a meal and nobody showing up to eat it. Hello. Amen. And I'll be a pastor for a minute. Nothing worse than preparing the meal and having it hot and ready and the guests are late for the supper. Hello. I thought when we went from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, that would, sir, solve our problems and y'all being late to church. Now you're still walking in at 11.30. My question is, how hungry are you to be here? How hungry are you to pull up your chair at the master's table? How much of God do you want? How much of his love do you want? How much of his power do you want? How much of his anointing do you want? How much of his glory do you want? He's got a table spread. All those things are on the table, but you got to come and eat at the master's table. Somebody needs to taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. So I wonder sometimes, what are we hungry for? And what are we eating? What are we feeding ourselves? Hallelujah. Amen. Are we feeding ourselves on the carnal things of this world? Or are we eating the bread of life? I dare say that too many of us are eating of the carnal things of this world. And too much of the natural things will diminish the spiritual things in your life. When I am totally given to the carnal things of this world. Amen. The weeds begin to grow up in my spiritual soul. And it begins to snuff out the power and the anointing and the glory of God. My father used to tell me, you, begin, you become like the people you hang around. If you're always hanging around with naysayers, you're going to become a naysayer. If you're always hanging around with carnal people, you're going to become carnal. You don't backslide overnight. I'll say it again. You don't backslide overnight. But it's when you begin to rather hang out with the carnal people than to hang out with the church people. There's something wrong with your Holy Ghost. When you'd rather be working than at the house of God and you know it's Sunday morning, there's something wrong. I'm pastoring now. Praise God. Everybody say, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. The question is, what are we eating? What are we feeding ourselves on? Because whatever we put into our body, hallelujah, is going to determine the outcome. Hallelujah. There's nothing wrong with the word. I said there's nothing wrong with the meal. The meal may have been the same since 2,000 years ago, but it's still a good meal. Hallelujah. The children of Israel complained because they got manna every day, but it was still nourishment for their body. I like that preacher. I don't like that preacher. I like that church. I don't like this church. Shame on you. You ought to just fall in love with the meal. I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter to me who stands behind this pulpit. I can get something out of every man of God that stands behind the pulpit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, he's not my kind of a preacher. It doesn't matter. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. It doesn't matter who the preacher is. But what matters is what is the word that the preacher is sharing. There's something in that message that can get a hold of your heart and can get a hold of your mind and can get a hold of your soul if you'll just pull up to the table and begin to eat. 
1 Corinthians 1, verse, or chapter 2, and verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, and neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. When you hang around with carnal people that talk about carnal stuff, amen, and people that don't have the Holy Ghost, don't expect, amen, for your soul to be fed. Could it, could, I believe God has put you there amongst those people that you might be a witness and you might be a lighthouse and that you might show shine the light that God has put in your heart. But when we sit there and we agree with all the negativism and all the carnal things that these people are talking about, amen, we're not letting our light shine. We're putting our light under a bushel. It's time for us to take the bushel off of the light and say, greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. I don't want to hang around with the carnal people. I want to hang around with some spiritual people. Hebrews 12 and 1, wherefore seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, he said, let us lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset us and let us run this race, hallelujah, that is set before us. I've got to run this race. It's not to the one that runs the fastest, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. Praise God. We've got a cloud of witness in here. There's people that's received miraculous healings. There's people that have been financially blessed. There are people that have been baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to give God the glory. We need to give God the praise. We need to lift up the name of Jesus. For he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men nigh unto me. The job of the church is simply to lift up the name of Jesus. <laughs> Clap your hands. Make a joyful noise. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. For what shall it profit a man? <laughs> Excuse me. If he gain the whole world... And lose his own soul. I got to work, pastor. I'm waiting for you to be a true man of God and stand up and tell your boss you got to go to church. Didn't get any amens on that. Hallelujah. What are you putting first in your life? What's it going to profit you if you make all the money in the world and you lose your soul or you lose your family or you lose your family soul? It profits you nothing. I said it'll profit you nothing. You got to sell out to this thing. You got to give it all that you've got. He doesn't want part of you. He wants all of you. Here I am, God. I may not have a lot to offer, but I'm going to give you all my heart, all my mind, all my soul, all my strength. You are more important than my job. You are more important than the amount of money in my bank account. You are more important whether I realize it or not. I'm going to put you first. I'm going to put you first, Jesus. I'm going to eat that bread of life. Matthew 6, 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasure upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Your treasures aren't down here. Who cares what kind of house you got? Who cares what kind of car you drive? Who cares what the label is on your, your clothes? Hallelujah. It's all going to burn up one day. 
And guess what? I don't think it's going to be too much longer. Jesus is getting ready to come. He's coming after a bride that's made herself ready. A bride that's more concerned about meeting him than what kind of house they live in or car that they drive or what kind of paycheck that they give. I'm here to tell you, it's a day to wake up. It's a day to pull your table up to the master's table. It's a day to begin to eat like we've never ate before and get excited about God and get excited about what God is doing in us and through us and he said if we will get if we will get excited about him he's going to get excited about us for he said greater things than this shall ye do you desire to see signs and wonders and miracles it will happen when we pull our table up or our chair up to the table and we begin to eat the word of God Praise God. A.W. Tozer wrote, he said, before a sinful man can think a right thought about God, there must have been a work of enlightenment done within him. Hallelujah. Before we can begin to think about God, God has already begun to do a work in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We think we chose God. We didn't choose God. God chose us. God wooed you. God called you. God chose you. The Bible says we're a chosen generation. We're a royal priesthood. We've been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. He said, therefore, show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Lift your hands in the sanctuary. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Why? Because the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. I'm going to praise him in the sanctuary. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to lift my voice unto him. I'm going to shout unto him. Why? Because I'm grateful for where he brought me from. I'm thankful for the power of God in my life this morning. Praise God. John chapter 6, verse 44. Hallelujah. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up in that last day. No one. Hallelujah. None of us really came to God. God came to us. Hallelujah. No one can come to God. Unless he draws us. Aren't you glad that God loved you enough to draw you out of darkness? To draw you away from the things of this world? Hallelujah. To let his light shine in your presence. He has endued you with power from on high. He ha ha ha. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I was once lost. But now I'm found. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm so glad that Jesus is merciful. I'm so glad that Jesus saved me when I didn't think that I could be saved. And when I thought that I had done so many sins that I could never be forgiven. I had walked away from God. And I didn't think I could ever come back. But Jesus still wooed me. And Jesus still called me. And Jesus still forgave me. And Jesus still wrapped his arms around me and there's somebody sitting in this house today that you think that you've done too many bad things I've come to tell you you've never done too many things that God can't forgive you God can make your sins go away as far as the east is from the west today is the day of salvation now is the appointed time hallelujah Hallelujah. First Timothy 2 and 4. Who will have all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that we should all come. Hallelujah. That we should all come to his table. 
that we should all eat from his table, that we should all be fed from his table. Hallelujah. I know in my life there's been times that God wanted to meet with me and I thought I was either too tired or too busy to meet with him. And God could have wrote me off, but he didn't. Aren't you glad he didn't write you off? Hallelujah. I have failed him many times. I have let my master down many times. But God in his mercy and God in his grace, hallelujah, he's been standing there the whole time with its arms outstretched saying, come on home, my child. You've been out there in the pig pen long enough. You've been been beaten up by the devil. Hallelujah. Your joy is gone. Your peace is gone. Your salvation is gone. But he says, pull up a chair at my table. Hallelujah. The story of the prodigal son, the father was waiting for the son before he ever even got to that house hallelujah he said kill the fatted calf let's have a party my son who was lost has come home and I'm here to tell the church this morning when the backslider comes in the house hallelujah it's not a day to point your finger and be judgmental it's a day where you been we're so glad to see you come and dine at the master's table let's kill the fatted calf let's throw a party there's food in my master's house Hallelujah. I'm so glad he forgave me. Hallelujah. God wants to have a relationship with us. I said God wants to have a relationship with us. Amen. Hallelujah. What kind of relationship would you have if you never talked to your spouse or your kids? Not much of a relationship. Hallelujah. And so it is. God has been there all the time and he's just been waiting on us to pull our chair up to his table. Hallelujah. Because he wants to sit down. He wants to break bread with us. He wants to touch us. He wants to nourish us. He wants to lift us up out of the pit. Hallelujah. He wants to restore our relationship with him. Hallelujah. But it first comes by us acknowledging that I have drifted away. Hallelujah. Confessing my wrong And coming and asking him to have mercy upon me again. And when I humble myself in the presence of God. Hallelujah. That's the thing about God. Amen. You know, in the corporate world, people are trying to climb the corporate ladder. But in God's kingdom, the way up is first down. When you bow your knee and pray. When you'll get a hold of God. If you are not worried about position. Hallelujah. But you're just worried about the presence of God. If you'll get a hold of God. And God. God's time, he'll lift you up. In God's time, he'll bring you forth. In God's time, he'll open the door before you. You don't have to kick the door down. Hallelujah. I wonder this morning, why do so many Christians have a shallow relationship with God? Why don't we... Want to draw closer to God. Why don't we want to have a more consistent relationship with him? What is it that holds us back? Amen. What would ignite us and cause us to respond to Jesus' call? Hallelujah. Come near. Come near to me. Hallelujah. Come to my table. Sit at my table. Taste and see that I am good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I personally believe, amen, hallelujah, the answer is simply in this, how hungry are we? How hungry are we for more of God? How hungry are me for are we for more of his presence? How hungry, amen, how, how much greater do I want to get to know him? Hallelujah. Is there a hunger in my heart? Is there a thirst in my soul that I can't wait to get to the house of God? That I can't wait, amen, to open up my Bible in the morning. I can't wait to come to prayer meeting because there's a hunger and there's a desire on the inside of my soul that can't be, hallelujah, I can't be deterred. I can't give up. I can't quit. I can't throw in the towel. There's something driving 
in me. There's something on the inside that wants more of him, that hungers for more of his power. There's something that thirsts for more of his righteousness. Hallelujah. I don't need less of him. I need more of him. I've got to have more of my Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help me this morning to lay aside my weight and help me to lay aside my sin and help me to get my eye upon you and help me to run with everything that's on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Because the time is short and the master is about to come after a people that have not sitting on the sideline watching everybody else. But he's coming for people that's in the game. He's coming for people that are running the race. He's coming for a people that are hungry and thirsting for the power and the presence of the Almighty. Clap your hands. Make a joyful noise unto him. David cried out in Psalms 42 and 2. He said, my soul thirsteth for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? He said, my tears have been my meat day and night, while they continually say unto me, where is thy God? Hallelujah. Verse 4 says, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me, for I had gone with the multitude. I had went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and praise with a multitude that kept the holy day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I tell you? Yes, you can go to the ball game. Nothing go wrong in going to the ball game. And yes, you can go, hey amen, do a lot of the things that the world does. Hey amen. Nothing wrong in some of those things. Hey amen. There are things that I would encourage you not to go to. Hey amen. But there are things that it's perfectly okay for you to go to. Hallelujah. But when we begin to want to be there instead of here, then there's something wrong in our spiritual lives. Amen. When I'd rather go to a ball game than come to the house of God, there's something wrong in my spiritual life. Hallelujah. When I would rather be at work instead of in the house of God, there's something wrong with my walk with God. Hear the preacher this morning. I'm preaching to bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And God is wanting some of us to make up in our mind today, I'm going to lay aside the weight. I'm going to lay aside the sin. I'm going to dedicate myself to the Lord and I'm going to run this race with all that I've got. Hallelujah. Because I don't care. Amen. The most important thing is that I hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. You fought a good fight. You kept the faith. You finished the course. Hallelujah. Well well done. I've got to hear him say it. I've got to hear him say it. I can't quit running. I can't quit now. I've come too far to give up now. I've come too far to let this devil steal my joy. I've come too far to let the devil steal my peace. My soul thirsteth for thee, God. I pray today, Lord, increase my hunger. Amen. Lord, increase my hunger. We are the people that decide whether we're hungry or not. Nobody can make you eat. You can come here and we can offer you the best meal, spiritually speaking, that you've ever ate. But if you're not hungry and you don't eat, there's not a thing I can do about it. You got to be hungry when you come to the master's house. Hallelujah. Praise God. We can create and maintain a hunger for God by protecting our soul and filling it with things that are godly 
and not carnal. Hallelujah. Amen. You can maintain by reading your Bible. You can maintain by your prayer. You can maintain by fasting. You can maintain with fellowship with one another. Mm. Hallelujah. I wonder about some of you because some of you don't fellowship with other saints in the church very much. Amen. And I don't really know why that is, but the truth of the matter is, is no man can be an island. We need fellowship. The book of Acts tells us they went from house to house, breaking bread and having fellowship one with another. Amen. We need the fellowship of the saints. Not that we get together and gossip, but hopefully we get together and pray. And we enjoy one another's fellowship. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because if we're not fellowshipping with one another, then perhaps we're fellowshipping with the world and we shouldn't be. I'm not saying don't have anything to do with the world because if we did that, then we could never win anybody. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. Hallelujah. Let your light shine. Amen. What kind of spiritual diets are we eating? How hungry are we for a greater move of God? Do we really desire to see souls saved or are we content that we're saved and that's all that matters? Do we long for the presence of God? Amen. I don't want to come to church anymore and just have a service. I want there to be a manifestation of the power and the glory of God. I want to see somebody repent of their sins. I want to see somebody baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Lord, increase our hunger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help me, God. Help me, God. You see... I've gone too long already. I've got more, but I'm going to quit. My wife's happy. She said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Brother Kaplan, I was over in India. I think the thing that got a hold of me the most was people that came out of the villages to church. Church was the most important thing in their life. They stopped everything they were doing and they came to the house of God. And they didn't just have church once a week or twice a week. They had church every day, twice a day. They got up in the morning at 4.30 and they started their day out in prayer in the sanctuary. They would walk to come to prayer. We won't even come to the house of God when it's raining outside. Or if it's too cold or it's too hot. One ninety-some-year-old man walked, I think they said something like 15 hours just to come to church. They were hungry. They were hungry. And they, they listened to us preach. And they responded. And they wanted more. Now by the natural things of this world. They didn't have a house as nice as yours. In fact, where I stayed, there was no running water. There was no bathrooms like you're accustomed to. You know what outhouses are. That's about what it was. Amen. And I'm not putting them down. They gave us the best that they had. But the church was packed every night. 
And after we got done preaching, I've told several this. Amen. It was just like being in the book of Acts. And when Paul laid hands on people, they received the Holy Ghost. And people were receiving the Holy Ghost. Everybody that would come to the front was getting the Holy Ghost. And people were falling out. And so many people was falling out under the Spirit. We had to try to climb over those that were laying in front of us to get to more people to pray with. And we couldn't even get to all of them. There was a hunger for God. There was a thirst for the power and the glory and the manifestation of God. And I'm trying to say, God has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And God is wanting us to develop a hunger for more of his power and for more of his glory and for more of a manifestation. Not just come and patty cake for Jesus and hallelujah. Didn't the choir sing good? Didn't the preacher? or preach good, amen, or I punched the time clock and I fulfilled my duty. No, I've got to get a hold of him. I've got to get a hold of him. I've got to pull up a, ta- a chair at the master's table. I've got a hunger for more of God. I've got a thirst for more of God. My soul is not content There's a stirring in my soul. How much do we want of God? How bad do we want him? I need more of you, Jesus. I need more of you, Jesus. Less of this world and more of you. Stand to your feet. Lift your hands to God. Oh God, I pray this morning, stir us, stir us, stir us, God. Stir my heart, stir my mind, stir my soul. I need you, Jesus. Without you, I can do nothing. I need you, God. I'm not going to give a long, drawn-out altar call. If you're here this morning and your prayer is that you need more of him, I invite you to come down this morning. Lift your hands and say, God, I want more of you. Will you come today? Will you come right now? I need more of you, God. Less of me and more of you.
With hope. 